Aloha and good day, friends. My name is Jason Michael Siegel, and today I will be talking about alchemy and nutrition related to the day of the moon, Mondays, and the corresponding organs of the moon. So if you'd like to learn about some foods and medicines that will support your brain and memory, listen on. This is from a book, The Path of Alchemy, and we'll start with the moon. Given today is Moon Day, Monday, La Luna, Lunes, Moon Day. So the moon rules over water, growth, agriculture, fertility, conceptions, emotions, instincts, and unconscious responses, psychic phenomena, family, being the mother, collective consciousness, rhythms and cycles, and genetic and cultural heritage. The moon corresponds to the brain and memory along with Saturn, the breasts in women, the womb in women and ovaries, menstruation in the female, the stomach, the esophagus, and the bodily fluids, including salivation, urination, and lactation. So some foods of the moon are pumpkin, turmeric, nutmeg, among others. Now, given that the moon rules the brain and the memory, I have found over the years working with this, these principles of alchemy, weekly alchemy and cycles, that it can be wise in, in harmony and resonance with uh, the astrological cosmic phenomenon. It can be wise to support the brain and the memory on the day of the moon. So in front of me, I have a plethora of foods and medicines that support the brain, and I'm gonna explain what each one does and how they can benefit you. And you can use your own discernment to investigate which foods and medicines can support your mental function, your mind. The clearer the mind is, the clearer the body and the mind is, the less distortion and confusion we have when navigating our environment, when performing tasks, and when unfolding our life. And we all came here to live a beautiful life. So it is important, very important to support the mind, to be a clear conduit for all you wish to perform and unfold. So let's get going. Moon day, we'll start with one of my favorite medicines. This is a lion's mane mushroom. Now lion's mane mushroom is a fantastic mushroom. It looks a lot like brain tissue. This has been shown to stimulate neural growth factor in the brain, creating new neural pathways. So that's new highways in the mind to learn new thoughts and connect different thought forms and areas of the mind that possibly don't always interact together. So lion's mane you can get like so. It's harvestable, purchasable at a grocery store. Usually an organic co-op will have some mushrooms and you can dry these, which I will be doing today. You can dry and powder these mushrooms and place them into hot beverages or soups. And you can also cook with these. You can saute these and they go, they pair fantastic with eggs. So that leads to my next point, eggs. The yolk of an egg has cholesterol. Cholesterol is gonna help repair brain tissue and support the overall function of not just the brain, but the entire glandular system, your hormones. So I'm a big fan of duck eggs over chicken eggs. Both are great. You want to source clean eggs, but duck eggs are found to have about triple the vitamin and nutritional content, omega-3 content than chicken eggs. They're a little more alkalizing for the body. When I eat eggs, I eat them raw now with raw milk or I'll cook them, but I'll leave the yolk runny. Occasionally I'll scramble. You can scramble eggs and keep them you want to scramble them on a low heat so it doesn't distort the enzymatic medicine of an egg. So eggs are fantastic. Lion's mane and eggs together, fantastic. To touch a little more on lion's mane, I make a product here called Neurogenesis, which has a blend of mushrooms, including lion's mane, that has been shown to exponentiate neural growth factor. So these are fantastic medicines for organizing the mind, organizing spaces, and improving memory and cognition. So next up, talk about one of my new favorite superfoods. This is blue-green algae. 
but this is called brain feed, which is a cracked cell wall, blue green algae. That means it goes straight through the blood brain barrier into the mind. It is pure liquid life force food for the mind. Now the foods with these blue pigments, blue berries, blue pigments are gonna support the mind, the crown, this area, this region of the body. Also very often the eyes. For the eyes, have a tremendous amount of DHA receptors in them. So any food that's high in DHA, blue green algae, it's gonna help support the eyes as well as these polyphenol antioxidants and berries. So it can be fantastic to make a smoothie with berries. These are blueberries here, frozen berries of, of um, especially the blue and the purple pigments, blackberries as well. Smoothies with that, blue green algae, fantastic. If you'd like to try and order some of this crack cell wall blue green algae, which is very hard to find on the market, reach out to me. I am currently distributing this product as well as I make these, neurogenesis. So let's go back to the foundations. The brain has been shown to be made mostly of fat. And scientists are showing now that the brain is composed of primarily saturated fat, which used to be demonized, saturated fat, long chain, thick fats, as well as omega-3 fatty acids, specifically the DHA omega-3 fatty acids. So given that saturated fat makes up a bulk of the brain, it is very important to support the brain with saturated fat. I have met so many vegans or vegetarians throughout the year that don't eat enough saturated fat and I can see, I can tell in their mental function, massive imbalances. So let's talk about saturated fat. Where do you get saturated fat from? Well, if you're not eating flesh, ghee and organic butter is probably the best source of saturated fat along with conjugated linoleic acid. Uh, there's small amounts of DHA omega-3s. I believe there's some cholesterol in here. There's a whole plethora of vitamins, vitamin K2, in ghee and in raw butter, raw dairy, raw milk. Mm -mm -mm. You want to make sure you get a clean source. So source your farmer, talk to your community, use your body when muscle testing things. I highly recommend ghee, especially if people have slight allergens to dairy. Ghee can be some of the least inflammatory and most easily assimilatable um, dairy product. So if you are eating flesh, which at the moment I do occasionally, you know, this meat, this is a lamb chop, a lamb leg steak. So you'll see there's a ring of fat around this meat. That is full of saturated fat and other good vitamins and minerals. So if you're eating flesh, fish and meat are great sources of saturated fat as well as other nutrients like taurine and carnitine and amino acids that support the mental function. Now, it's all our choice if we eat flesh or not. I get this is a big uh, discussion that I don't want to get into at the moment. I wanted to share that I personally eat meat occasionally, I personally eat fish occasionally, and every time my body tells me to eat that, I notice a tremendous clarity in my mood and my energy and my vitality, but I personally don't eat meat all the time because it can weigh down on my emotional body. So we have the power of flesh, eggs, fish, as I mentioned, ghee is a really important raw dairy, muy importante. Uh, another food I like is honey. Honey is a fantastic quickener of the mind. It's just an amazing sacred food made by the bees, very high frequency. I notice with the honey, quickness, clarity, in the mind, it feeds the hypothalamus, um, which is you know the epicenter of the brain. Bada boom. So, next up, tincture medicines. Herbal medicines can be fantastic. Brain and memory herbs. So these plants have these constituents that they're kind of like acupuncture for our organs and glandular system. Now the ginkgo and the brain and memory tonics are amazing. I've been consuming these for years. This is a brain and memory tincture made by Herb Farm, and this has Gotu Cola, Ginkgo, Skullcap, Sage, and Rosemary. So these are all herbs and plants that support the memory and often the calming of the mind as well. And this is a Ginkgo tincture that I make. I've harvested from the mountains of Idaho and it is extracted in gin and glycerin. Ginkgo has been shown to heal damaged brain tissue if you've ever had a concussion. Glutathione and ginkgo. Mm -mm. This also supports memory and cognition, uh, among other things, circulation in the brain. So I'm a big fan of these 
tinctures and herbal medicines, which you can consume like so by putting a prayer into the tincture. Placing the tincture bottle underneath the tongue, so taking a dropper and holding it. Mm. Mmm. Ah. Can be strong because it's extracted in alcohol, but very potent. So, to review thus far before I continue, we have the building blocks of the brain, which would be saturated fats, cholesterol, meat, eggs, clean dairy. We have the mushrooms, which help us learn. We have the plants, which help us heal and refine. We have berries that stimulate, honey that stimulates, not so much stimulates, but um, activates the mental centers. And now I wish to talk about minerals. So this is Shilajit, mountain minerals from the Himalayas. And this is Ormus, monoatomic elements made by alchemists. Now the minerals are conductors, electricity. Given that our brain, our nervous system, and our body is a bioelectric system, when we put in the right minerals, we get conductive. We can think more quickly, we can process information more rapidly, everything flows. But you have to have a solid foundation before you start increasing the capacitance of a system, if that makes sense. You don't want to be putting a 240 volts of electricity into a system that cannot handle that much. So we start with the foundations, and then when we get to a certain level, we can begin to add minerals like shilajit, ormus, also a big fan of these Kaimana Hawaiian trace minerals, which you can add to water, you can add to liquids. Shilajit you can take like so, ormus you want to take in prayer and ceremony under the tongue. This would, be, this would be beginner and intermediate medicine. I'd say intermediate. This is an advanced medicine, the Ormus. So if you're curious to try any of these, Kaimana you can purchase in a health food shop. Um, the Shilajit, I have an affiliate code that, I will, that is in my link tree. I will place it in the description below. Fantastic medicine also heals the gut lining because it has humic and fulvic acid. I am a big believer, big proponent of Shilajit in these times because we have so many poisons that are destroying the integrity of the gut. And scientists are showing that 80% of our serotonin that makes us feel good, content, mood regulating hormone is made in our intestines. So when healing the brain, you also want to address the intestines, which has to do with removing certain foods such as genetically modified foods, inorganic foods, anything sprayed with pesticides and glyphosate, which is gonna be GMO non-organic. I'll get more into that in another video. Uh, being very mindful of the grains you eat, such as corn and wheat specifically, as well as soy. Those are the most allergenic poisonous foods. Uh, if you're going to eat those foods, make sure they're organic and moderate and listen to your body. Eat whole foods, eat digestible foods, sweet potatoes, um, soups, such as that can really heal the gut. And I'll go more into that in another video. This is specifically focused on the brain and the foods for the brain but you wanna remember that the gut is connected to the brain, so it's really all connected, right? Hmm. I'd like to wrap it up for the day. I wanna thank you for listening, watching this video. If you've made it through, give yourself a pat on the back. May you integrate everything that was shared here for your well-being and empowerment. I pray that this uh, supports you in your life, in your memory, in your mood, in your cognition and in your entire being. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Happy Monday. El Dia de la Luna. Thanks for watching.